Good morning, I'm Reverend Deborah Thompson, pastor at Ebenezer United Methodist Church. And we wanna welcome you, amen, during our Lenten season. We wanna welcome you into our virtual worship experience. And may you be blessed by all that you see, hear, and experience during this Lenten season, amen. For all the things that you've done for me Things so undeserved Yet you gave to prove your love to me And the voices of a million angels Could not express my Good morning, Ebenezer and friends. Well, it really has been a year since we've been together, but we're still standing strong. You know, one thing about people who love each other and know each other, we find ways to keep connected. So I hope that this week you take the time to pick up the phone, send a card, to someone that you have not seen. Tell them hello. Just a simple hello will make their day magnificent. What do you think about that? I think it's a good idea because I've been receiving cards and telephone calls and texts from people that I haven't heard from in a while and it surely makes my day. All right. Remember, think of someone else besides yourself, and don't forget to take your shot. Ha, still haven't taken mine, no. I'm a little scared, but keep praying. I'm closer than I was. I did call and try and make an appointment, but where I'm going, hopefully I can just walk in. So keep praying for me that I don't chicken out. Good morning again. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you for being God all by yourself. And we seek you in our decision making. We pray for those that are sick and shut in on our list. We pray for the nation. We pray for each other. We pray for our time to come back together again in fellowship. We thank you, God, for being God all by yourself. We know that it is in you that everything moves and does what it does. But we're ever so thankful for how you're keeping us and doing what you need for us. Lord, we just pray for our children, even though their, their school situation is a little disheartening. 
but yet they are still striving and doing their best. Help the teachers to understand them and the instructions that they receive take heart. We pray for our college students, for our students in the military. We pray for the nation, one by one and name by name. God, I can't name it all, but you know all and see all. So we are depending on you to do what's best for everyone, as you always do. It is in the name of the Father, the Son, and the precious Holy Ghost that we pray. Amen. Thank you, Sister Denise Morell, for your fervent prayer. And saints, we got to keep on praying, for there is power in prayer. Ebenezer, our morning announcements before you is a list of all of our sick, shut-in, and those who desire prayer. We ask that you call out each name and pray for each person daily. We are especially praying for Brother Lorenzo McCarthy, who's at Lakeside Rehab, Brother Winston Hibbert, who's in rehab, and Brother George Peterson and Sister Sandra Means, who are both at home. We're asking God's healing grace be upon each of them. We're praying for all the lives lost during the coronavirus. We're asking that God's hands of protection continue to be upon all of us. Our sincere sympathy is expressed to the family of Geraldine B. Foster. Ms. Foster died on March the 9th, 2021. Her funeral service will be on Monday, March the 15th at 11 a.m. in the chapel at Afonso West Mortuary. We're praying that God bless and comfort the Foster family. Bible study. Our next Bible study will be held on Wednesday, March the 17th. We are entering into a series, and it is titled, Because of This, I Rejoice. Our Bible study will be from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. We're asking that each of you join us for our hour of power. Prayer time in the sanctuary every Thursday from 11 a.m. till 1 p.m. Our next relaunch team meeting will be on April the 7th from 5 o'clock p.m. to 5.45 p.m. We're asking that all relaunch team members be present. We will discuss when our doors to back the church worship can be open. We will ensure we will follow all safety guidelines as ordered by the CDC. As we end our announcements, we have a short video on the importance of getting your COVID-19 vaccine. Following this video, we will end our announcements and continue on with our worship service where we will give God all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Hi, I'm Dr. Kelly. I know how difficult it's been adjusting to life during COVID-19. Like each of you, I've had to find new ways to spend time with loved ones and connect to our community. It hasn't been easy. As the COVID-19 vaccine is now being provided across our state, there's more hope than ever that we'll be able to return to normal activities with friends and family. But it's gonna take a commitment from everyone. I want to encourage you to talk with your doctor or healthcare provider about the vaccine and what's best for you. The vaccine is new and was developed quickly, which means you may have questions about it. I did too. I want you to know that like all vaccines, the COVID-19 vaccine was developed under strict guidance from the FDA. It was thoroughly reviewed for safety and effectiveness before receiving emergency use authorization. Existing infectious disease research, increased financial support, and focused scientific efforts got us here quickly. But safety is always a top priority, and this was not compromised. 
It's also important that you know that the research on the vaccine included people of different races and ethnicities, including Blacks and Latinos. That is one of the reasons why I confidently encouraged my two 81-year-old parents to get their vaccines. And as soon as I have an opportunity, I will be in line as well. The vaccine was created with everyone in mind, so no one should miss the chance to get their shot. Keep in mind, you can't get COVID-19 from the vaccine. It does not affect your DNA. And although you may have some side effects, that's usually a normal sign that your body is making protective antibodies. For most people, these symptoms are mild and last only a day or two. We're all eager to reunite with family and friends. For me, getting the COVID-19 vaccine means I'm one step closer to hugging my parents again. What's your reason? When it's our turn, let's roll up our sleeves together and do what's right for each other. Learn the facts about the COVID-19 vaccine by visiting the websites on your screen, or feel free to call us and we can help answer questions about the vaccine, including where it's available in your community. And please, continue to stay safe. Wear your mask, wash your hands, and stay at least six feet from others who don't live with you. We all have a role to play to stay safe while we wait for our shot. Take good care. May the peace of the Lord be with you. And I can hear you warmly saying back to me and also with you. Saints, our congregational hymn this morning is Great is Thy Faithfulness. Let us sing together with uplifted voices.
Members and friends, it is now time for our tithes and offering. Luke 6 and 38 says, Give, and it will be given to you. Here at Ebenezer, we have three ways to give. You can mail your tithes and offering into our church mailing address, which is shown on the screen. Or you can stop by the church and drop it into the church drop box. We have a new online giving link. This link will be made available on next week. Thank you, saints, for remaining faithful in your giving. Members and friends, we will now be led in our song of preparation by our minister of music, Brother Joe Watts, followed by a word from the Lord from our pastor, Reverend Deborah A. Thompson. church family. So glad to be able to present this morning words of encouragement. God favored me. Love, it's patient, caring. Love is kind. Love, it's felt most when it's genuine. But I my share of love abused, manipulated, and its strength misused, and I can't help but give you glory when I think about my story. And I know you favored me because my enemies did try but couldn't triumph over me. No, they couldn't know. Yes, they did try but couldn't triumph over me. Well, they can relate to that story. All I can say of God before us can stand against us. Amen. Come on, y'all. Sing this with me right now. Love is patient. Caring. Love is kind. Love is felt most when it's genuine. I've had my share of love. Manipulated and 
it shrimp is you. <laughs> but you know what? I can't help but give you good. <laughs> Every time I think about my story, well, I know, I know you favored me because my enemies did try, but they couldn't try them. <laughs> they couldn't try them over me. Yes, they did try them, but they couldn't try them over me. Check it out what they did. They was they told their lies, but you know what? My character, my integrity, my faith in God, He favors me. <laughs> will not fall, will not bend, won't compromise. Because you know what? <laughs> I speak life and prosperity. I speak health because God. You know, they still whisper, and they conspire, they told lies, but my God favors my character, my integrity, my faith in God, He, I will not fall, will not be, I won't compromise, cause I speak life and prosperity, Amen. Thank you, Brother Joe, for that beautiful selection. We praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Through music as well. Amen. Let us pray this morning. Dear most gracious God, Lord, we come to you as humbly as we know how. Of this month, Lord, we just want to give you praise, honor, and glory for your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we just thank you for this day, a day that is beautifully made and wonderfully made by you. And Lord, now as your servant prepared to minister your word to your people, we ask that you allow me to decrease as you increase. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. This morning... I wanted to give a word that would encourage us all during these times that we are in right now. And the word of the Lord came to me from Nahum chapter 1 verse 7. And it reads, The Lord is good, 
a stronghold in a day of trouble. He protects those who take refuge in him. Now the book, Nahum, bears the name of the prophet Nahum. Nahum's name means comfort or consolation. They say there's a lot in a name. But the name Nahum or comfort is a strange name for this book because the book of Nahum is a book of judgment. The book of Nahum is a book of harsh punishment, harsh pronouncements of doom against people who have abandoned the ways of God. The book is a sequel to the book of Jonah. We all like sequels, don't we? About 100 years earlier, Jonah was sent to the city of Nineveh. Nineveh was the capital city of the nation of Assyria. Now Jonah in Nineveh preaching a message of certain impending judgment. When the Ninevites heard the message of Jonah, they repented of their sins. When they repented of their sins, the Lord spared the city of Nineveh. This brings us to our text for today. Now a hundred centuries has passed. A hundred years later. Well, a century has passed. Correction, not a hundred centuries. A century has passed. A hundred years later, and the people have turned away from the commitment they made to the Lord. While the prophet Nahum's message is one of judgment and wrath, there is one bright spot. And I find it in verse 7, which says, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. He protects those who take refuge in him. In the midst of all the words, there were words of wrath, there was words of anger, and there was words of doom. Verse 7, it stands like a shining beacon of hope on a dark night. Verse 7 stands like a lighthouse on a dark night, helping to guide ships into a port. I want to shine the light on the words of the prophet Nahum when he says, the Lord is good. Thus, my sermonic title, the Lord is good. Note the emphasis, the Lord is good. Right now, we all long for some good, don't we? We all desire a portion of good, don't we? And we all could use a dose of good right now, can't we? This morning, I want to give you a way that this text, even amid wrath, this text, even amid punishment to the Ninevites by God, this text, verse 7, demonstrates the Lord is good. We are shown heavenly assurance in this text today. Nahum clearly states the Lord is good. Now what is special, what is meaningful, and what is hopeful and inspiring about the prophet Nahum making this statement, amen? This statement is made against the clear backdrop of God's judgment on the Assyrians. So just a little history I hear you asking me, Pastor, what's a little history on the Assyrians? You see, the Assyrians were the vilest, meanest people of that era. The Assyrians reviled God's law. The Assyrians ignored God's law. They found countless ways to curse God and cut God out of their lives. Yet even in the backdrop of all that, the prophet Nahum found the strength, amen, and the courage to tell the people the Lord is good. You see, it takes strength and it takes courage to tell a person, to tell people who have experienced hurt, pain, disappointment, wrongdoing, 
Maybe there's someone who experienced the loss of a child, the loss of a job, the loss of their livelihood. It takes courage and strength to tell that person or those persons, the Lord is good. Our nation, this world that we live in today is like the ancient Assyrians. Our world has in many ways wandered far away from God. In 2020 alone, we had racial inequality issues. There was pro police brutality. We all know about the protests. And yes, a global pandemic, coronavirus. A virus which has affected millions of people in millions of ways. A virus which has led to people losing jobs, businesses, livelihoods. A virus which has caused thousands of people to say a final goodbye to loved ones. In 2021, our nation's capital was under siege. Six days into the new year, I repeat, six days into the new year, people, we have wandered far away from God. Our world is a world under judgment. Our nation is a nation under judgment today. Our Pledge of Allegiance says, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In his inaugural address, our new president, President Joe Biden, appealed for national unity and a battle for the common ground. The 46th president was sworn in on the steps of the U.S. Capitol, which just two weeks ago was smothered in tear gas. He spoke these words. On this hallowed ground just a few days ago, violence sought to take the Capitol's very foundation. We came together as one nation under God, indivisible, to carry out the peaceful transfer of power. Vice President Kamala Harris, in delivering her first speech as our Vice President, just steps beyond the sitting relic of Abraham Lincoln and a short distance from where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. shared his iconic words that has inspired generations said, even in dark times, we not only dream, we do. We not only see what has been, we see what can be. Our vice president went on to say, this is American aspiration. The turmoil in our society, the upheaval in our economy, and the steady decline in our mortality, according to studies, because of the coronavirus, may, and I say may, be traced to our abandonment of God. It may be traced to God's subsequent abandonment of us. Yet, there is one thing for sure, saints. Even during judgment, just as the prophet Nahum spoke the words, the Lord is good, we too can have assurance that the Lord is good. Regardless of the realms of life, finances, government, people, pain, problems, sickness, or even death, the Lord is good. Regardless of the massive and destructive personal, corporate, universal, regardless of the massive and destructive physical, mental, emotional strains of the coronavirus pandemic on all of us, the Lord is good. 
You see, God's compassion extends to God's handiwork. We are God's handiwork. We are the creation formed by the creator. Despite how things look, uh, despite how things sound, despite how they taste, despite how they feel, despite even how they smell, amen, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. It gives us assurance in all situations, I say this morning. I don't say in some situations. I don't say in possible situations. I don't even say in ideal situations. The Lord is good, gives us assurance in all situations. It gives us insurance in all circumstances, and it gives us insurance in all conditions. I need a witness here this morning, see, because things happen in our lives. But I'm here to say what happened yesterday happened yesterday, amen. Yesterday is gone, amen. What happened last year, it happened last year, amen. Yesterday and last year is gone, amen. What happened last night, what happened this morning, what happened just a minute ago, amen. Last night, this morning, that minute is gone, amen. God's mercies are new every day. So it is no secret I heard the songwriter say what God can do, what God has done for others, he will do for me and you, amen. So we say, well, where can we go where God is not there? Psalm 137, 139, verse 7 reminds us, where can we go from the Lord's spirit? Where can we flee from the Lord's presence? Because we have some people trying to go and hide and flee, amen, but we cannot go away from the Lord's spirit. These storms of life, the storms of life in high places and in low places, and I even say it in those no places, the Lord is good, amen. God's amazing grace, it tells us we once were lost, but now are found. We was blind, but now we see, amen. Jesus' blessed assurance, amen, tells us. Blessed assurance in the words of the old hymn. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste it says of glory divine. We all heirs of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. And the Holy Spirit tells us, sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly love, Stay right here with us, and while here, keep on filling us with your love, amen. The Lord is good, and this is what we can take away from this message today. The Lord is good. This has been the word of God for the people of God, amen. Amen. Now we'll offer our invitation to discipleship. Amen. If there's one or two or more in here today that will acknowledge that I am a sinner. Lord, I have sinned and fallen short. Amen. Of your glory. Then believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then last, accept the Lord into your life as your personal Savior. Then I believe you will be well on your way to having that relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Ebenezer, before our pastor come back before you with the benediction, we will have our church leadership installation. As their names appear and scroll on the screen, our leaders have said yes to our pastor, Pastor Deborah Thompson, and to you, the congregation, to continue to serve in their various roles for the year 2021. Leaders, you have been called by God and chosen by the people of God for the leadership in Ebenezer Church. Our pastor recognizes your special gifts and challenges you to offer your best to the Lord, to the people, and to the ministry in the world. May your faithfulness be rewarded 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we'll offer our benediction. May the peace of the Lord be with us as we leave this place, wherever we are, in our homes or our special places, may, as we leave this place, yet never from the presence of the Lord. Amen.